question that the House do now adjourn. And I call the Honourable Member for Lawler. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. No, Speaker. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise this evening on a variety of matters in the education and early childhood area. As you may be aware, the electorate of Lawler has over 10,000 families that access early childhood support and many that access out-of-school hours services. Most of my electorate would be classified as urban growth. However, there are still small pockets of quite isolated rural areas that I represent. One such is Little River. Population of Little River is around 750 people. It is served by a combined shop and service station and, like many other small communities, these double as a post office. It has a hotel, a kindergarten and a small primary school. The primary school is aptly named the Little River Primary School. It currently has 114 students from 77 families. It is ably led by Principal Pamela Heen and School Council President Gillian Caldwell. It has only in recent years been rebuilt by the State Labor Government. It is a school providing a great education and it is a focus of the local community. Two weeks ago, the school contacted me, shocked to discover that due to a change in classification, it is now regarded as an urban city school. Now, Madam Speaker, this school has an out-of-school hours care that operates from 7 to 8.45 a.m. and 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. 57 students from 39 families access before or after school care out of the 77 families that use the school. Imagine their dismay in discovering their reclassification means the service will lose $16,000 in funding, basically making it unviable. The ramifications, Madam Speaker, are very real for these families. There are no public buses in Little River. The children who use this service would be left to walk home to an empty home in a town that has no footpaths. On one side of Little River, children would need to cross a bridge with no room for pedestrians, only just enough room for passing cars. On the other side of the town, they would need to cross an unmanned railway line. If they were to lose their out-of-school hours care program, they would be likely to lose approximately a third of their families. To lose this program would be crippling for Little River Primary School and for the Little River community. The reality, Madam Speaker, is that if parents in this community cannot access out-of-school hours care, they may be forced to change schools, to have their children attend a school closer to where they work out of their local area. This could leave the school less viable and the downward cycle of local service assets would begin. This is not, Madam Speaker, a service at the edges. There is no alternative for these families. There is no neighbouring school to combine with. There is no private provider. This is a vital service that has been supported to date by the Commonwealth Government. It seems a short-sighted decision and I call on the government to reverse it for the Little River Primary School and for other schools similarly affected. I would also like to speak on other matters around education and early childhood. I would mention the impact of the cuts to kindergarten funding, dropping the guarantee 15 hours of kindergarten and the huge effect this will have on our community. Now, I know that the minister may think that this has gone away because of the promise for the announcement for 2015 but she is very wrong if she believes that. In my community, with high numbers of low SES households, high numbers of, no of families from non-English speaking backgrounds, only approximately 80 per cent of children are enrolled in kindergarten now. With a potential increase in fees, this number would only, the number of people not, children not attending kindergarten would only grow. This means those children who would benefit most being the most likely to not access the important early education programs they need. So the minister needs to know that this will not go away in our community, that the community are campaigning and will continue to campaign until that 15 hours is guaranteed beyond 2015. Further, my community has the highest number of registered family daycare services in Australia, and there are 44 services in Lawler that are set to lose funding 
due to the cuts to family daycare funding. I would implore the minister to re-look at these two issues and think of the people of Lawler while she does.